Everyone, this is Don Anders. Uh, as you may have already been aware, uh, there was a new law passed called the Secure Act 2.0. And what that Secure Act 2.0 does is it kind of changes a lot of different rules about retirement, actually makes it a lot easier and better for a lot of savers for retirement. We're going to go over that in this video today, specifically how that impacts people in the Florida retirement system. A lot of these laws do not impact people in the Florida retirement system because a lot of them apply to 401ks and IRAs, which most of you do not have. Some of you may. Uh, so we're gonna get into the ones that apply mostly for the Florida retirement system uh, and that I think are the most important for people in your situation. The first one that I wanna bring up is the new required minimum distributions ages. So before it was 72, but as of January 1st of 2023, they have raised that age up to age 73. So if you're turning, this really impacts people who are turning 72 uh, next year in 2023, you, do no, you no longer have to take a required minimum distribution. And moving forward, it will be 73. Uh, until 2029, when it will go up to 74. And then in 2033, it will go up to age 75. So you can apply that to your ages respectively. Uh, but for most of you watching this, now the new age is going to be age 73. Now remember, your required minimum distribution, which is the amount you have to start taking money out from your pre-tax accounts, that is that needs to be taken out in the year that you turned 73. So if you turn 73 January 1st, you don't have to take out the money by January 1st, you just have to take it out by the end of the year that you turn 73 now. So just remember that a lot of times people think, oh, well, 73, I have to, I turn January 14th, I better get it out quick. No, it's by the end of the year that you turn 73. There's also some rules in there that give a little bit of leeway in the first year. I don't wanna get into that, but remember, 73 is the new required minimum distribution age for any pre-tax retirement accounts. The second change that I think will impact a lot of people are is the ability to convert a 529, which is a college savings plan, into a Roth if that money is not used for school expenses. Uh, and so a lot of you that are watching this, you might have kids or grandkids that you have a 529 for. And if you decide that maybe college isn't the way for them, maybe they're gonna go to, to work right out of school or something else, you can take that money and you can start converting it into a Roth account. There are some restrictions there based on how long the account's been set up. It does count as a Roth contribution. There are things in there that you would need to talk to somebody about. But if that's something that you're in that situation where you, you save this money for a child or a grandchild and it's not being used for that education that you intended it for, you can start converting that over to a Roth and get that after tax, that tax-free savings uh, for the long term, not just have to take it out and take a taxable distribution on it. Okay, this next one doesn't really apply to a lot of Florida Retirement System employees, but if you have a spouse or a child or someone else who is not a Florida Retirement System employee, I think it's one of the most important changes that they've made. So if you have a company that matches for a Roth 401k, so in the past you could contribute to a Roth 401k, but the companies match, so let's say that they matched you up to 5%. If they match that, it had to go into pre-tax. Well, as of January 1st of 2023, that match you can elect to go into a Roth account. The reason that's important is now, when you get it when you retire, it will be after-tax money. It'll be tax-free money, which is really important for retirement planning. The reason it doesn't really apply to most people in the Florida retirement system is most of your employers are not going to match the 403B or a 457 because instead they contribute to a pension, uh, your, your FRS pension, which in my opinion is a much better deal. Uh, but that's why it doesn't really apply to you. But this next new feature is something that I'm not sure whether or not um, it's going to be used by many state municipalities, school boards. Uh, cities, counties, those types of things. But there is a new provision coming out where employers can make it uh, where a portion of your contributions 
will go into a Roth account that can be used for emergency funds up to $2,500 per year. Uh, and so what that means is that there will be a separate account set up. Now you're paying for it, obviously, and you, you'll be able to opt out if your employer does, does decide to do this. But <clears throat> basically $200 per month, approximately, can go into the account that can be used by you tax-free whenever you have an emergency. Um, and so the nice thing about that is it's if a lot of people don't have enough saved to pay for things, um, like uh, you know emergencies, those types of things, so they end up having to go into debt, credit card debt. Uh, instead, this will have the $2,500. So part of your contributions will go to that uh, savings account that would come out tax and penalty free in the case of emergencies. There's pros and cons here, but for those of you who kind of need a, a forced savings or like the idea of being able to access some of your retirement money without a penalty, this could be really good. There's also a rule uh, where depending on certain emergencies where the employer can allow up to $1,000 per year for distributions without the 10% IRS penalty and without having to pay it back as a loan. Uh, so those might, the second one I think will definitely come into play uh, for a lot of FRS employees. We'll, we'll see whether or not that $2,500 emergency account is set up inside of uh, the retirement accounts for state employees. I'm just not sure about that one. The next one is the catch-up contributions on 403Bs, uh, 457s, retirement savings plans. Uh, so as of right now, the contribution limits in 2023 will be $22,500 for a 403B uh, and also for a 457. There will be a catch-up, there's a catch-up provision after the age of 50 where you can contribute an additional $7,500 currently. As of 2025, that will go up to $10,000 for the catch-up contributions. Now, there are other special catch-up contributions, uh, different ones for 457 compared to a 403B. So my recommendation is if you have more questions about what you can contribute, how much you can contribute, either ask your payroll department or feel free to schedule an appointment in the links below uh, and we can let you know, pull up your information and figure out exactly how much you can contribute to those retirement savings, but it will almost certainly be going up uh, in 2025.